please be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is a case of St. James versus Esau. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. Good day, Your Honor. Miss St. James, you claim for the first 33 years of your life, you were a daddy's girl from early childhood all the way through your dad walking you down the aisle. But just six months ago, after an argument, your father dropped a bomb on you and said, you are not my daughter. You and your brother have opened a case to prove paternity today. Is that correct? Yes, yes, Your Honor. Mr. Esau, you state you have always believed Miss St. James was not your biological daughter, but could never find the right time to tell her the truth. You state this 33-year-old secret has been haunting you for way too long and you are ready for the truth to set you free. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Miss St. James. Yes, Your Honor. Tell the court what happened six months ago. I wrote my dad a letter um, right before Christmas, a couple weeks before Christmas, just telling him how I felt about him not being in his grandchildren's lives and how he's not being the father that we need since we lost our mother at a young age. And that was his response, is the reason why I haven't been in your life is because uh, the reason why... He didn't answer that any is, of my that questions. Is, that is not true. He didn't answer my questions. He basically responded three days later with the reason why you went through the things you did as a child is because you're not my daughter. That was his response. That is not what I... That is... That, so I that was the first that's time you had ever heard of he a paternity and question anything. Ever. You just wrote your dad a letter. And he this is the father you've known your whole life. My whole, my whole life. <laughs> You're great. What happened, Mr. Esau? How did this all oh, six start? Ago. It's something that I've always wanted to talk to her about and tell her, you know, and it just never was, uh, was the right time. Is it your testimony that for 33 years you have known that Miss St. James was not your biological daughter? Correct. Yes, Your Honor. What did her mother tell you? And she just basically told me she was pregnant. This was no. not something you knew for certain? Mm. No, not 100%. I mean, it wasn't 100%, and but, you that's know, the doctors... that's why he shouldn't have never said been, anything. Well, that's why he shouldn't have did this to me. Time, I've been through lines, so much stress and anxiety because of Timelines have been matched up. This happened. Based on the you doctor... You don't do that. I, I went to his house every summer, Christmas. You couldn't have me swabbed. You couldn't do anything. All these years, I'm 33 years old. It seems... I mean, I understand your stress, Miss St. James. I, I, I can see it in your eyes, and, and, and it truly it is powerful. Tell the court, what has this six months been like? I've been throwing up every day. I have anxiety. I have stress. I have an autistic son that I'm trying to raise. I, I've been just... Ever since, I can't eat. I'm losing weight. I, I'm just torn apart. He just trying to kill me, I guess. I don't know. I feel like I'm going to die. Oh, honey. Of heartbreak. Oh, honey. <laughs> So this has completely rocked you to the core. Yes, it has. Because you felt like whether the relationship was good or bad, you knew that families go through ups and downs, but you believe you had your daddy and you knew who he was. And my dad, in the letter that I wrote him, had nothing to do with my childhood. He kept texting me, I'm gonna write you and tell you about... I said, why are you want to tell me about my childhood? I'm grown now. What are you talking about my childhood? I'm asking you why you're not in our lives today. Mm. And he says to me, I'm gonna call you in a few and let you know why. And he did. I'm not your dad. Let me be clear. Did you say to your daughter, I am not your biological yes. father? Or did you say, I may not be? He said, I'm not. I'm not, and I explained and, to and her he, why. And it he wasn't a mean way. Two more, mean, two more men that could possibly be my father. And Mr. Esau, I wanna be clear. <clears throat> Miss St. James' mother, she's always talked to you about you being the father. Correct. And she never wavered on Any the fact that you were my whole life. the biological father. Correct. What was your relationship with her mother? Can you take us <clears throat> back? Um, from the beginning, uh, she transferred into the school that I was going to. I seen her that morning, and, you know, she looked good. So I'm like, well, you know, everybody's kind of like, wow, who's that? And I asked her if she wanted to go to the party, and she said yes. Picked her up, and you know we, uh, you know that's that's when I first had our first, uh, you know, had sex, and it just kind of went on from there. 
you know? And so you started a relationship? Yes, I got, yes. Okay, and so take me to the pregnancy. When her mom found out she was pregnant, were you told? She told me, yes. And so take me back to that time. Uh, basically, she told me she was pregnant, and I'm like, okay. Uh, you know, you're 18, you're like, okay. I'm like, wow. You know, you don't really you know how to really a- react, but I was like, okay, wow, she's pregnant. And it wasn't until the doctor told her how far along she was, and doing the math, it was, you know, before me. And, you know, so she, it wasn't like she was cheating on me, because we had just started. It was, she was already pregnant prior to us meeting. That was what you believed at the outset. As soon as she told you she was pregnant, you did the math in your mind and said she must have been pregnant before she met me. Not right away. I mean, that's nothing you think about right away because she's telling you she's pregnant. There's other emotions going on. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. But at some point, Mr. E saw you continue a relationship with her mother because you all end up having her brother, KJ. Right, later on, yes. They got married after I was born. He so, went, he, so he named how, me. <clears throat> how huge could the doubt have been if you ended up continuing the relationship, getting married, having another child? What's happening here? I, you know, one of the things, also talking to my mom, you know, and she explained the time frames. Okay, sat down, she sat down and talked to me and was like, okay... When did this happen? When did that happen? When did this happen? And he and probably told her whatever she needed to hear. Uh, and what the doctor said. All Mom. right. And your mother is here. I would like yes. to hear from you, ma'am. Please stand. Okay. Step up to the podium and state your name for the court. Helene Reese. Ms. Reese, thank you for joining us today. I would like to know, how is it that you determined that there was truly a doubt surrounding the paternity of Ms. St. James? And what did you convey to your son about that doubt? She and her mom came to my house with this piece of paper that had uh, terminations could be done through 24 weeks in California and through 20 weeks or something like that in Colorado. So when I looked at this piece of paper and when I talked with him later, I asked him when was he first intimate with her. And what did your son tell you? He told me that it was right before... Valentine's Day. And based on what he told me, I said, okay, this should not be 20 weeks. So you asked your son, when did you meet this young woman? Right. And what date did you become intimate? Your son gave you the date and you determined through the paperwork the window of conception was before when your son claimed he even met Miss St. James' mother. So then for the past 33 years, You've been grandmother. You, yes. you, you, you've been that. Yes. And once your son married Miss St. James' mother, they went on to have a family, another yes. son. You're the grandmother. Yes. Mr. Esau, KJ, I want to hear from you because I know this is difficult testimony and your sister is very emotional and we understand why. This is not easy. Your entire life, were you ever told anything different that your father was not your sister's biological father? Uh, through my whole life, I thought that Jasmine was my sister. We were all the only ones that came from my mom and him. So um, that's all I've known, him, him being my father. So to get this news um, like this is just, you know, it's just a, it's, it's hurting uh, as far as, you know, the allegations put upon my mother. Uh, yes. You know, it's just like, you know, why, why now? You had so many other opportunities, you know, and it just feels like that this is out of spite. Um, it feels like this is out of, out of anger because of the words that he said, she said cooked. to him, you know, bothered him. And so you believe that truly your father doesn't have any reason to doubt your sister, you believe this is maybe out of anger because she challenged him about his level of involvement in the family and, and basically said, I need you to do better. Definitely. And he didn't take that very well. And you have never heard anybody say that Mr. Esau, your father, is not your sister's biological father. <clears throat> well, my dad did call me one time in 2009. Uh, he had a little liquor in him and uh, he was crying. And uh, he said that Jasmine might not be his. And what did you say? Uh, I said, what? What? What, are you, what are you talking about? What are you talking and then he about? And called him back and told him I was drunk and he didn't mean what he said. Did he... you call back the next day, Mr. Esau, and say, I'm sorry, I was drunk, I didn't I mean did. what I said? I did. So... I, I was in my emotions. 
You know, there's those moments where they say, you know, a drunk man's words are a sober man's thoughts. And that says to me that whether you have a reason to doubt or not, why 33 years? I mean, we are now, we've we've progressed so much in in the realm of paternity and and all of these things. And why is it just not... My daddy was in the Air Force. He had... He lived a nice life, you know. He had money. He could have got a test done any summer, any Christmas that he said he had us. So, I want to I wanna understand I was that child. from you. What happened? How does life just keep happening? It's hard. Like I said, it's the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life, and it's hard. I mean, no, it's never the right time. I always had... It. And I take full, uh, full responsibility for that, because I should have. And I've told her that many times. Yes, I should have. Uh, your mom should have. Your mom was gone. It was my responsibility. Yeah, and I should have. But... There's never the right time. You know, it's all, like I said, I always, I always made excuses because it was so hard to do. I've always made, like she said, she's a daddy's girl. It was, that was one of, like I said, one of the hardest things I've had to ever do in my life. I always made excuses, well, it's a birthday coming up. Uh, here's a holiday coming up here. And I always made excuses because it was, it was hard for me to do. I didn't know how to do it. So, Miss St. Paternity. James, what are your hopes for today? Your, your father, he's walked you down the aisle. He's, you said you're a daddy's girl. This has been... He better not be my daddy. The last six months have been hell. Hell on earth for me since December 8th or whatever day it was that you decided to say you're not my daddy no more. If you don't want to be my daddy, you don't have to be. Jim, tell the truth about how I told you. You make it sound like I just came out and said, I'm, I'm not your daddy. You, you and I... said I'm not your father just like that. That's okay. just on that's the phone. I just picked up the phone you and said you're not my phone. father. You said, I have something to tell you. I'm not your daddy. And I said, you're lying. We look just alike. We both have booty chins. You said, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not the only person with a booty chin. The other guys got booty chins, too. I went looking for both of the men. That is not how I, I told you. I found one of them. And he said that my mom and dad uh, told him that he didn't need to worry about it because I was his child. So... So you actually went to find one of the other potential fathers... I, I found one of them. And that man told you... No, his son told me, because I didn't talk to him, I talked to his son. Okay, so you talked to the son, and the son of this man said that my father was told years ago that he didn't have anything to worry about. Mr. Esau was your yep, biological that's father. that's what that man Which told then reaffirmed son. what you had been told. Yep. So the truth is, nobody really knows. There has been a paternity secret brewing for over three decades. And nobody really knows the truth. And nobody can even understand how I feel and how what I've been through. Like, I don't have enough stress. I lost my mother when I was 18 years old. I'm raising a son with autism. And me, whether he's my father or not, had nothing to do with the letter that I wrote. So why are you telling me this? Answer the questions in the letter. Miss St. James? And I did. No, you did not. Miss St. James? Have you prepared yourself for these results? Yes, I have. I'm ready. You're ready? I'm ready. Because I have the truth for you. I need the truth. As you stand here in this moment, do you still believe Mr. Esau is your biological father? I do. You do. Jerome, let's get the truth. (laughs) These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of St. James versus Esau, when it comes to 33-year-old Jasmine St. James, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Esau. Yes, Your Honor. You... are not the father. Can I give her a hug? That's if she... I can accept it. And I'm sorry I waited so long. I mean, that was... It's my... I've always taken responsibility for as that talking to her that, of not telling her. That was her right to know. And I should have told... She should have been told a long time ago, not when she's 33 years old. But that's... You'll never understand how hard that is. It, it truly is why we do this because we want people to have the truth. Can you tell the court in this moment just what are you feeling, what are you thinking, what do you need? I need my mama. (laughs) I need my mama. 
I need my mama. That's all I need. I can't get no answers without her. Only she knows who she slept with. Only she knows who she was with. I appreciate him for raising me and being my daddy, but I'm still hurt. Somebody should have told me the truth. And listen, we're here now, and I want you to understand, your dad has said he had two additional names. If these gentlemen are still alive, we are here for you because that's what we do here. Thank you. Okay? So I don't want you to think all is lost because you still have your family, and now you got me and my staff. Do you understand? So this is not over. And I've told Jasmine, no matter what comes out in this court, that all, she's always going to be my first grandchild, and I'm still her grandmother. All right, I'm going to send you off to Dr. Jeff, and I wish you all the very best. Continue to stand by your sister. Well, she needs you even more now, all right? I do. I wish you all the very best. Court is adjourned. <laughs>